Let's just try this again, shall we? Hi, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel which is all about sewing and styling a handmade wardrobe. Today I'm bringing you a redo of my Make 9 for 2023. Now I originally made my Make 9 plans at the end of December 2022 and I've already made a couple of things from that list. However, after I got my colors and my body typing done by Miriam Style, and I have a video that I'll link up here in case you want to check it out, I decided that there were a bunch of things on my original Make 9 that I just really wasn't interested in making anymore. And because Make 9 is not like an official sponsored challenge, it's basically a personal challenge, I thought, why not just redo it and make nine things that I actually want to make this year instead of struggling through my original Make 9 when I don't even have any interest anymore in making a lot of those projects. So we're gonna go over my updated Make 9 now. So I wanted to give myself a quick win, and so I did keep a couple of projects from my original Make 9, and the first one is the Sew Over It Pussy Bow Blouse. This pattern comes in sizes six to 30, and I actually completed this project already. It was from my winter module sewing plans, and I still owe you guys a video. I'm actually still working on the last piece for that module. But anyway, I did make the Pussy Bow Blouse out of a Dashwood Studio rayon, so that one is done. And it does feel really good to already be able to check one off of my new Make 9 list. Before I forget, I will be putting pattern links down in the description box, and I'm not going to be sharing any fabric with you today because although I do have some fabrics in mind for some of these projects, there's just a really good chance that I'm going to change my mind and I want to keep things as flexible as possible. So number two on the list is the Sewaholic Pindrel Blouse. This one is an old one. It's one of the very first indie patterns that I ever bought. This pattern comes in sizes zero to 16 and it does come in a paper and a PDF form. Now I have actually sewn this pattern twice. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull up any of the pictures from that. But actually both of my attempts were fails, not so much because of the pattern, but I think I made some poor fabric choices. This was back when I was less experienced at sewing and I really ended up not liking either version that I made. Now the reason why I put this on my Make 9 list is because I think that it fits really well with the direction that I want my style to be heading in. So it's a princess seam blouse and it's fairly long and you're meant to wear it tucked in. And then it has three different views. There's a sleeveless view, there's one that has a little ruffle cap sleeve, and then there is one that has a pleated sleeve. I think because this top is fairly fitted and it's meant to be tucked in, it has a fairly high neckline and then it has those optional shoulder details that it would be a really good design for me for my new wardrobe. I will very likely choose a print fabric and probably a rayon, and I don't know 100% yet, but I'm probably gonna make the version that has the ruffle cap sleeves. I think that this would make a really cute addition to my spring and summer wardrobe. Number three on the list is the Fiber Mood Ermine Blouse. This comes in sizes extra small up to 3XL, and I've wanted to make this ever since the pattern came out. This top is a button-down blouse, and it has an angled yoke with gathers underneath the yoke, and then it has fairly straight sleeves. I've seen this top made out of many different fabrics, and they're all so pretty. I'm thinking that I either want to do a print and add some piping into that yoke seam to kind of make it stand out a little bit more, or I might want to do some contrasting fabrics, like maybe even do something like a lace for the yoke and then like a rayon underneath that. I'm not quite sure yet on fabrics, but I think that I could do something to make this really interesting and intricate looking. And I really do love a button up blouse. It's one of my favorite items to sew and also one of my favorite items to wear. So I had to put something like that on this list. Number four on the list is an out of print pattern. It's Simplicity 2451 and it's for skirts and it comes in sizes four to 20. Now there's two different basic designs of this skirt and then they have different lengths. Both of them have a wide waistband and then the first version is a little bit more of a straight skirt and then the second version is a little bit more of a trumpet skirt. Now actually both of these skirts would fit into my Kibbe recommendation so I'm not 100% sure which one I'm gonna try yet. I might try, even try to do both. But for my Make 9, I want to make at least one. Now this pattern I actually owned back in the day, but I ended up getting rid of that pattern and so I had to buy a new copy from eBay. But I do really remember loving the skirt. I made two different versions. I made the short skirt version and the trumpet skirt version. And I think that it can make a really nice addition to my wardrobe now. Number five on my updated list is the Closet Core Ginger Jeans. This is another one that's a blast from my past. I've made it two or three times before. It comes in sizes zero to 32 and it's a classic stretch denim skinny jeans pattern. 
Now, when I originally made these, I wanna say I made them back in 2017-ish, I really didn't know a lot about pants fitting, and although I tried my best to try to get them to fit, I just didn't know what I was doing, and so I didn't do a very good job, and the jeans that I made did not look very good on me, and so I did not end up keeping them. However, in the past couple of years since I've returned to sewing, I have learned so much more about how to fit pants that I think I can do a better job this time, and I do have quite a bit of stretch denim in my stash. Now, as part of my Kibbe recommendations, I am supposed to wear slim fit cropped pants pretty much all the time. I mean, I'm not actually gonna do that, but I do see the appeal of adding that type of pant to my wardrobe. I do have a fair amount of skinny jeans in my closet, but the problem is that my jeans are all like five years old or older, and I have gotten larger since I first bought them, and so I need to make jeans that actually fit me. Now, from what I can remember from making the ginger jeans the first time around, they are not a high rise on me. I made the high rise version, but I have a weirdly long torso for being such a short person. And so I do know for sure that I'm gonna have to increase that rise to get them to sit where I want them to sit. So I'm just gonna take my time and probably do like a test pair first. And then hopefully eventually I'll get to make some classic nice skinny jeans I can wear over and over again for years to come. Number six on my list is a pattern that I do not own yet. It is the Heijun Handmade Roslyn Trousers. This pattern comes in sizes zero to 30 and it has three different views. There's a slim fit leg, a straight leg, and a bootcut leg. Now the reason I wanna make this pattern is because it's for stable knits like Ponty, and I think that adding a knit skinny fit pant to my closet is gonna be really comfortable and really versatile for my work wardrobe. I do have a number of ponties in my stash that would work really well for this pattern. So when I am ready to actually make it, I'll go ahead and buy that pattern and I think I'm gonna make the skinny leg view. Number seven on my list is another holdover from my original Make 9, and that is the Vicky Sews Bryce Blazer. It comes in sizes 34 to 52, and that is from Russian sizes. I really want to sew a cropped blazer. I've wanted one of these for a while, and since I got my body typing done, I think that it would just work really, really well with my body shape. I do have a few different fabrics that I could use for this from suiting fabrics to a heavier weight linen. I don't know yet which fabric I'm gonna use, but I really, really like to make at least one of these this year. And it is a little bit more of a complex pattern because it does use tailoring techniques and it's fully lined, but I think I'm up for the challenge and I'm excited to make that one at some point this year. Number eight on the list is Vogue 7975. This comes in sizes six to 22, and as far as I know, I think this is still a current pattern that you can find in the drawers today. This is for a classic Chanel style jacket. I do think that I might need to shorten it a little bit because I would prefer mine to be a bit more cropped. Now I definitely don't have fabric for this. I'll have to find some at some point because I'm really looking for that classic boucle, but maybe something in a little bit of a bolder color. I know in the past I've seen fabrics that have a black base, but then there's all kinds of colorful little specks going through it. I think I might want something like that. And at least right now, I'm hoping to kind of go all out and maybe add the trims or do something to make it really fun and interesting. And I'm picturing it as the kind of jacket that I can just easily layer over a simple outfit, even something like a t-shirt and jeans, and it'll dress it up. Number nine on my list is Simplicity 9463, and it comes in sizes six to 24, and this is the only dress that I have added to my Make 9. I'm still struggling a little bit with the idea of dresses. A lot of dress styles that technically fit under my body typing recommendations, I don't really like. So I'm still trying to work out for myself what kind of dresses that I actually want to wear that also will look good on me. But for this one, I really do like the look of this dress and I think that it does fit my body typing recommendations because it has a higher neckline, it has lots and lots of details, it has a button front placket, and I would probably make view B, which has the little flounce at the bottom. I think that, that would be really cute. And I think I might even try to add some contrasting details. I don't think that I have suitable fabric for this. I don't even know yet what fabric I wanna use. And I think it will be a really fun sew as well. So I'm excited about trying that one. Now, if you would like more details on why I completely changed my Make 9 plans, watch this one next.